Hi everyone, I'm Paul Creed and I work in the Royal Docks team. The Royal Docks team is a joint initiative between the Mayor of London and the Mayor of Newham and our job is to help regenerate and redevelop the Royal Docks. We've got lots of different projects in our programme ranging from development sites and infrastructure through to cultural and arts projects but today I'm going to talk to you about some of the projects that we've got to improve the green spaces in the Royal Docks. Now, first, I just want to talk to you about what I mean when I talk about the Royal Docks. And um, the map on the screen shows the kind of area that I'm talking about. So the, the three main Royal Docks and the large development sites that surround them. And they're going to provide a lot of new homes and new spaces for businesses and opportunities for employment and jobs. So those projects are going to happen over the next 10 to 15 years. They're large projects. And within that, we're also working with partners to develop a range of other projects, including in the green space. But why I wanted to talk to you first is about how we've come to those decisions about which projects to invest in. And we started with trying to create a plan for the whole area to understand where the gaps were, what the projects were that were important to the local community, and how they all link together. Because the area is very large and is very varied and it needed an overall plan so that we could understand how the different spaces would link together. Now, each of the development sites where the houses and offices and employment spaces are gonna be built, have got their own plans. But really what we wanted to do was to create a plan that talked about all the bits in between. So the roads, the spaces, the parks, the squares, all the bits in between the built environment. And so we created what's called a public realm framework. And we did this with some landscape architects, but on the back of a, a big process of consultation with the local community and businesses and stakeholders. And we asked people what their experience was of the docks, how they wanted that to be improved and what they wanted from the public space in the future. And it's from that framework that we've developed a series of projects. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Now, I think we all know that the, we all know the value of green spaces and open spaces, particularly over the past 18 months and the value that they provide to our communities. And some of them um, are in need of improvement. And that's what we've been trying to do over the past 18 months or so. And we've got some projects I'm going to show you that have already happened and somewhere we're looking at ideas of how we can improve the area. And some are very small and some are quite large and they vary in their impact across the area. So the first project is a tree planting program. The, the Royal Docks has got um, a limited amount of tree cover compared with other parts of the borough and other parts of London. So we applied for some funding from the Forestry Commission who were doing a program uh, for planting more trees in towns and cities. And we have got funding along with some of our own money um, to plant those trees. Now, the first phase of that was is on screen now. And that was a series of projects where we identified places where we could plant trees. Now that may seem quite simple, but we went through a, a quite a detailed process of asking local communities where they'd like to see more trees. Did they want some more in their street or were there places in their community that they wanted to see more trees? But also we had to do a kind of more practical assessment of where it was possible. So it's not always easy to plant trees in an environment where you've got a lot of utilities, so electricity and gas mains and drainage, but also around the dock edge, the, the opportunities to plant trees are quite limited because the roots could damage the dock walls. So we did a process of identifying places and spaces where we could plant more trees. And we've planted around 200 across the area, uh, working with other landowners and the council to identify those spaces and to agree the process of maintenance um, over in the coming years. Now, the second phase is in locations where it's more difficult to plant permanent trees in the ground. <clears throat> and this is either because, the, as I said, the, the dock walls are, um, are located there and it's, it's impossible to plant the trees directly next to them. And so we've agreed to plant them in planters above the ground, but still providing the tree cover and the canopy and the opportunity for biodiversity. And in other places, such as along North Village Road, where we're undertaking a highway improvement scheme with the council, 
where the, the location of the planting would change. So we wanted to put them in planters so they could be moved later. So that process is going to start soon and we've identified, as you can see on the screen, a number of different places for those to go. And we see this as kind of a, a project that's been really helpful for us to understand the views of the community about where they want to see planting and trees to provide more um, green landscaping in the area. Now, I mentioned there the project with the council to look at North Woolwich Road, <clears throat> and this is called the Royal Docks Corridor because it includes North Woolwich Road and Silvertown Way and runs from Canning Town to the airport. And the council have been working for a long time now to plan a big improvement in that space. For those of you that know it, you'll know that it's an area that has a lot of traffic, it's a very wide road, and it's quite intimidating if you're a pedestrian or a cyclist, given the amount of traffic, but also the speed of it. The road was built when the docks was an industrial area and it was built for large amounts of industrial traffic. And as the area changes with more housing being built, it needs to change too. And so we've been working with the council for some time now to look at design proposals to narrow the road, reduce the speed, provide more planting and space for pedestrians and cyclists to make the whole area much more appealing and enjoyable. And you can see on screen there some of the images from the um, programme that we think um, are really going to be a big improvement for the area. Now, as part of that project, we're running a consultation programme at the moment, and that's um, live at the moment and is on uh, the council website. There's a, a link on the screen there. And we really want your views about what you think about the designs and the way in which we've redistributed the space to give more space for pedestrians and cyclists and to make the area greener. This will hopefully really change the character of that road that runs for uh, three kilometres or so through the southern part of the Royal Docks and connects a lot of new and existing communities and really can provide a lot more green space trees and plants to improve the feel of the area, how, it, how, it, how you experience it, but also the biodiversity of the area too. Now Thames Barrier Park is another project that we've been working on recently. The park is actually about 20 years old now and was built uh, and laid out when the docks, the regeneration of the docks was at its infancy really. And when it was uh, when it was created alongside um, the white art deco development that's just to the west of the park it was really isolated really it was one of the first new projects that was done um, in that time and it's 20 years old and it needs a bit of improvement and a bit of tlc and also the area around it has changed dramatically there's a lot more uh, housing around it a lot more people call that park their park and they use it a lot more than it was when it was first laid out so we wanted to understand how people use that park but also how they wanted it to be improved and changed now the park if you don't know it is split really into two bits there's a very kind of formal planting area that you can see in the foreground there with uh, a variety of uh, vegetation and plants and hedging and then beyond that in the background, some more kind of traditional park space, lawns and trees that are more informal spaces. And so we did a consultation to ask people that lived in the area what they wanted to see improved in their park. And the, the results were really quite interesting because they showed that people wanted some of the basic infrastructure improved, things that either weren't put in when it was built 20 years ago or that they'd like to see improved, but also that the cafe that's there that we've recently spent some money refurbishing uh, should, be at, should be open later in the day and that there should be more planting and trees. So that's what we're undertaking at the moment. And if you've been down there recently, you will have seen some of the works compounds that are undertaking the improvements. And you can see on screen there a kind of phasing plan for how we think that will work over the next few months. We, we really want to see this as a, as a way to help more people use the park and to give it an extension of life and to make it as relevant to the local community now as it was when it was first created. More recently, um, the area around the Crystal, which will be the new City Hall uh, later this year, we did some improvement works to that area um, some time ago now. 
which really was to try and improve the space around the building to provide some green space for people to use. And we spent some money to improve the long areas, the paths, and to increase the amount of planting. And it's been great since those works were done to see so many people enjoying and using that space, particularly um, during last year when we were all so glad to be able to have the opportunity to get outside. Now those spaces will remain once City Hall moves in and they'll continue to be a resource for local people to use. One of the other projects that we're about to embark on and which there have been some consultation on and a planning application is some floating gardens. Now the docks is obviously based around a huge body of water and we wanted to try and do a pilot project just to explore the opportunity to introduce planting and access to the water. Um, this is just a small project, it's, it's not huge, but it's really just to explore and to test how these projects on the water can be done and how the local community respond to them. We've had a really good response so far and, and the project has now got planning consent from the council uh, and hopefully will be installed later this month. And we th think this is a really good way of bringing in not just an improvement to the biodiversity for the docks, but a chance for people to get closer to the water and to really see how improvements can be made. As I said, this is just a small project and it's really helpful for us to test how these projects can be made to work and how people like them. And so we really welcome your kind of feedback on that once it's open later this month. In the longer term, these projects uh, are quite small in some ways, but influential, I think, in helping to give better access to open spaces. And there are a number of big development sites, as I talked about at the beginning. And in a number of those, open space and green space is a really important component. And I just wanted to touch on one of those today as a comparison to some of the other projects that I've talked about. Now, Thameside West is a big regeneration project at the western end of the docks, and they got planning consent relatively recently for 5,000 new homes. And with that new community and neighbourhood that will be built there, it's going to include quite a lot of green space because the developers who are Silvertown Homes working with the GLA have sort of accepted and embraced the, the fact that open space is really important. And they're going to create within the master plan for that site a four acre park. So this will really add a, a big new green space to the docks that will be a valuable asset, I'm sure, for not just the people that live in those new homes, but the existing communities in the Royal Docks. And along with that park plan, there'll also be a, a, an extension to the Thames path to link in with the existing leeway that runs up to Stratford. And we've worked really closely with the developer and the engineers and the environment agency to plan a new river path with planting at the river edge to provide space for species at the, 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 um, live in the water and that were able to occupy this new space. Because I think we all value the green spaces that we have, but they provide a really good resource for nature, as well as helping us to fight the battle against climate change. So I think hopefully those projects have given you a kind of summary of the projects that we're doing in the Royal Docks to improve the open spaces and to try and look at some new ideas about how biodiversity and green space can really enrich the developments and the area.